Hello everybody and welcome back to the second episode of Education with Jovan. I never thought that this series would get this far but here we are today. The topic for today's video is about Sorry, I have to take this call. Hello? Yes, I'm in a meeting right now, so can we table the discussion for later? Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so as I was saying, the topic for today's video is the periodic table. Let's get cracking. The periodic table that we are so used to seeing these days took a very long time to experiment with and perfect. It all started off when Johann Wolfgang Dobreiner, a German chemist, noticed that certain triads of elements had surprisingly similar properties. This led him to make the first scientific effort at classifying the elements. He proposed the law of triads. But this law only worked for a few of the elements that had been discovered and so it was labeled as a mere coincidence. Almost 36 years later, John Alexander Newlands, an English chemist, proposed his law of octaves this law was a lot more promising than the law of triads what he observed was that every eighth element resembled in property to the first element when arranged in increasing atomic mass much like the do in music returns after the t this law too while promising didn't hold true for the heavier elements and so it was eventually scrapped cut to four years later And in comes his Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev and he claims to have a solution to all our problems the periodic law the properties of the elements are a periodic function of their atomic weights a uh, question what does this mean oh hi dwight that's an excellent question so what this man does is he makes a table and he fills up the elements row wise from left to right on account of the increasing mass and elements with similar properties get added to the same column at this time only around half the elements we noted they have been discovered so obviously there would be gaps and holes in the table which he left blank and he also made some attempts to estimate their properties now at the time scientists debated over this and they could find no wrong with it So Mendeleev went away happy and satisfied and 2 years before his death in 1907 the periodic law was published. The year is 1913 and advancements in science and technology have helped Henry Moseley pick up a slight but vital error in Mendeleev's periodic law. He shows through his research that the properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic number that is the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. The math checked out and Mendeleev's periodic law was modified accordingly to what we have as the modern periodic law. This modern periodic law still holds true and from it we have derived the long form of the periodic table. Now that we have learned the history of the periodic table, we will learn how to read the table and gather information from it. This right here is the modern periodic table in all its glory. The table is divided into seven rows called periods and 18 columns called groups. Each element belonging to a particular period has the same number of shells in its atom. Therefore, the elements in the first period have only one shell of electrons. Elements in period 2 have two shells and so on. Elements that are part of the same group have similar electronic configuration in the outermost shell. Let me explain this. Oxygen, the eighth element belongs to group 16 and has an outer shell ec of 2s2 2p4 the next element of this group is sulfur with an outer shell ec of 3s2 3p4 followed by this is selenium tellurium and polonium all of which have the similar outer shell ecs apart from this there is a broader classification of elements based on the addition of the differentiating electron into s p d and f block elements Remember when I said that the outer shell EC of oxygen is 2s2 2p4 so from that we can see that oxygen is a p block element as the differentiating electron or the final electron enters the p subshell of the orbit similarly 
If the differentiating electron enters the S, D or F subshell, we classify it as an S, D or F block element respectively. Earlier we saw that elements are arranged in groups and classified into blocks due to the similarity in their properties. Let us examine some of these trends in more detail and identify the reasons behind them. First up is atomic radius. Two trends are particularly obvious. Across a period, the atomic size decreases and down a group, we see an increase. For instance, let us examine the second period. It is apparent that starting from lithium to fluorine, we see a regular decrease. Next, let's have a look at the alkali metals or group 1. It is evident here too that the atomic radius increases from lithium to cesium. The reason for this is pretty simple. In a period, as we move from left to right, the nuclear charge increases as the number of protons increases and the differentiating electrons are added to the same shell. This results in a stronger attraction by the nucleus, resulting in decreasing atomic radius. Down the group, the number of electron shells increases and so does the nuclear charge. However, the increased nuclear charge cannot compensate for the increase in shells and so the radius increases. Secondly, ionization enthalpy. Before I explain the trends of ionization enthalpy, what is ionization enthalpy? Let me explain. Let's suppose we have an atom here who is an excellent salesman. I ask him for one of his electrons and he says no. I say please. He tries to make me a deal. He gives me his outermost electron and I, in return, give him some energy. This is exactly what ionization enthalpy is. Now different elements have different amounts of electrons they can lose and different values of energy they can gain. There are some elements which require very small amount of energy to release an electron and there are some which have incredibly high ionization enthalpies. These variations are the trends we are looking for. Across a period, ionization energy increases from left to right and down a group, it decreases. This can also be explained with the atomic radius we discussed before. As we travel across a period, the atomic radius decreases. This means that the outermost electrons come closer to the nucleus and more energy has to be given to the atom to remove the electron. Down a group, as the atomic radius increases, the valence electrons move further apart from the nucleus and need less energy to be removed from the atom. In this way, ionization enthalpy increases across the period and decreases on the group. The third trend for this video is electron gain enthalpy. To explain this concept, let's bring back the salesman from the previous point. This time, I ask him if he wants an electron. Saying yes, he makes me a deal. For my electron, he will give me some energy. Agreeing to the deal, we trade. This is exactly what electron gain enthalpy is. The energy released when a neutral isolated gaseous atom is converted to a negatively charged ion. Similar to ionization enthalpy, different elements have varying values of EGE. Some elements release less energy to accept electrons, some release more, and some even require energy to accept electrons. This leads to two observable, although less regular trends. Across a period, EGE becomes more and more negative, that is more energy is released, and down a group, EGE becomes less negative, that is less energy is released. This is the result of atomic radius and electronic configuration. Across a period, as the atomic radius decreases, the outer electrons get closer to the nucleus and the electronic configuration approaches that of a noble gas or a stable EC. Therefore, the tendency to gain an electron and acquire stable configuration increases and the EGE becomes more negative. While travelling down a group, electrons get further away from the nucleus, so not a lot of energy is required to accept an electron. This makes the EGE less negative. The final trend for discussion is electronegativity. When compounds are formed, they aren't always done so by the loss or gain of electrons. Quite often, atoms share a pair of electrons and form covalent bonds. When different atoms come together to form bonds, they obviously have different nuclear strengths. 
This unequal attraction causes the pair of electrons that are shared to move closer to the stronger nucleus. This apparent attraction can't be measured scientifically and so we have a scale composed by Linus Pauling, the Pauling scale, where fluorine, the most electronegative element, is assigned a value of 4 arbitrarily. Generally, electronegativity increases across a period and down a group it decreases. In a very general way, electronegativity is directly proportional to non-metallic character. So, greater the non-metallic character, higher up on the Pauling scale the element is placed. It is very well known that exceptions are the building blocks of chemistry and the trends in the periodic table are no exception. Pun intended, group 18 elements, also known as the noble gases, are a big reason for the exception. Starting from atomic radius, we notice a sharp exception. The atomic radius that decreases across a period suddenly increases from group 17 to 18. This is because the noble gases have a fully filled outer shell and the inter-electronic repulsions tend to increase the atomic radius. This unexpected increase affects other properties which you will see later. Trends in ionization and enthalpy are quite regular and only a couple of exceptions are important. The first one is with beryllium. This is mainly because of the outer shell EC of beryllium which is 2s2. The s orbital can fit only two electrons and as the orbital is completely filled in beryllium, the atom has relatively higher stability, known as full fill stability, leading to a higher IE than expected. The next exception is seen with nitrogen. The outer shell EC of nitrogen is 2s2, 2p3. This also has to do with the stability of the atom. Now to keep it simple, the p orbital has a total of 3 subshells, which can accommodate up to 6 electrons. As we can see from the outer shell EC of nitrogen, it has 3 electrons in its p orbital. This imparts some stability to the atom, known as half-fill stability, which causes the observed exception of an increased ionization enthalpy. With respect to electron gain enthalpy, oxygen and fluorine exhibit exceptions along with the noble gases. The exceptions with oxygen and fluorine is due to the extremely small atomic radius of the two elements. Due to the small atomic radius, an incoming electron doesn't feel much attraction leading to a less negative EGE as compared to sulfur and chlorine, the elements directly below them. The exception with noble gases is their large positive value. This is a result of their stable outer shell EC and they do not want any more electrons and only accept them if supplied with a large amount of energy. Electronegativity is more regular and there aren't as many notable exceptions to the trends given. And that's all there is to talk about the periodic table and that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. Feedback and criticism will always be appreciated. And please do like, subscribe, share with all your friends and family. See you in the next video. Bye. Um, how do I turn this off? Uh, press this one? Okay, thanks. Cool.